Hey YouTube, we're going to do a real quick video. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but I do want to show you guys that it's very possible to make your own adjustable uh, trigger that's going to take uh, pre-travel and over-travel right out of the picture. It requires a few adjustments. I'm going to go through those real quick. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, just break this down for us real quick. And, uh, you know, we're going to go from there. And we're going to take a look at this trigger that, uh, you know, essentially cost me, uh, you know, 66 cents or 60. I believe I used the smaller screws, so they're 30 cents each. Um, that's these guys here. Uh, you can see these are little, I believe, uh, 440, um, number 4-40 stainless little allen head screws and this is the wrench that goes with it and essentially we're going to be using two of those inside the uh, trigger and I'm going to show you what I did let me go ahead and take this apart real quick and um, you know we'll go from there So I always drive my pins out um, from left to right, and when I'm installing them, obviously, I go right to left. This is a Glock 17 Polymer 80 frame, and you know this uses factory parts. This is gonna be a factory trigger, and I've done this on several um, factory Glocks, and it's the same thing. In fact, it works a little better on a factory Glock because the trigger guard um, the opening here is actually a little bit closer on a factory uh, Glock. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this guy out. Actually, in order to pull it out, I almost lost that screw. I have to go in here and adjust this. This is my pre-travel screw. And I have to adjust this back out so it lets the trigger come back out. That way. When I pull it out, it actually slides out. So here's the trigger. It has been modified. Um, if you look here on the back, you can see that there's a set screw here. Let's see. This is the over travel screw that I installed. And if you look on the front here, and you can see a little bit of a bulge, not very much, and it really doesn't do anything um, to the profile since that's already sunk down anyway. This is the uh, pre travel set screw. And essentially, it stops the trigger from, you know. Um, going too far forward on the reset and uh, upon pulling the trigger it prevents it from going past the point of sear break and this is a really easy to do um, I used a looks like a number 43 drill and so this is just a little teeny tiny drill and I'm going to show you here the angle we're looking for Essentially what you want to do is you want this to be, you know, just under the, you know, the, the outside diameter, or the inside diameter of the, uh, the main pin. So we don't want to, we don't want to drill into that. So we come underneath it. And if you look here, you can see the the line. What I do is I just come the width of the drill bit down below. So basically, you know, I would end up setting it up obviously on the other side, uh, similar to this. All right. And then we drill through 
and this hole ends up pretty much going just like this and you can see that it comes through and I actually created a little bit more of a channel here on the back side for the screw to come um, in without having to flex the whole trigger out and you know that's it that's that other than okay and, and then there's one caveat to this these Glock triggers have a big um, you know they have this this extra stop up here the idea is that you're gonna come in with your uh, with your razor blade and you're gonna pull this out as far as you can get it and you're gonna go right up to where that stop is Let's see if I can get it in some better light. Um, so you're gonna go right up to where that stop is and you're gonna cut that stop right off, straight off. You don't wanna go any lower than that and you wanna cut it straight along with the stop. And I don't have, um, I don't have the other Glock here to show you the one that hasn't been modified. I have tested this um, at the range several hundred rounds since I've done it you know I consider myself to be a fairly knowledgeable gunsmith but this isn't necessarily something that requires a whole lot of um, you know skill there's a few things that you want to be careful of number one um, when you have this set you want to make sure that and this is you know when, when people say riding the wall what they're doing is they're looking at and excuse all my Glock grease all over this they're looking at riding the wall means they're right at the edge right before it slips down and that's that's when the sear breaks right when it comes off of that ledge and falls down and so when they say they're riding the wall that means that they're they've come right right to the edge of that but also in a manner that you know if they push down or if you push down on this when it's seated in there it's not going to disengage and you know potentially be a dangerous situation and then also um, you know that's your this is going to be your your pre-travel adjustment and then back here is your over travel adjustment and that's what the back screw does that's this screw here I've got this one set so I'm not going to mess with that at all but I am going to go ahead and just reinstall it real quick and show you you know the difference um, have I done anything else to this I haven't done anything else to the trigger this is a factory 5.5 connector 5.5 uh, pound connector I have just by doing the over travel and uh, or the pre-travel and the over um, the over travel adjustments and a few other things I'll get into in a second I was able to get this down to um, four and a half pounds and that's using uh, the 25 cent polish job and you know basically all factory parts and just putting set screw in the front set screw in the rear here and here and I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this we're going to take a look at the amount of travel that we're talking. Make sure I got this in here. Okay, and I've done this a few times now, so. And we're going to want to stick this guy in here. Find your home. There we go. And that looks pretty good there. Yeah, that looks 
pretty good. Okay, so you can see that the modified uh, trigger safety here is actually catching on the frame. That's, that's the first safety. Obviously the second safety is going to be the plunger here. That's our second safety. And both of those are functioning. And you can see as soon as you pull the pull the trigger safety, it releases. And I'm going to go ahead and readjust this take that travel back out of here so now if we look here you can see there's a big old gap right here okay so watch what happens when I adjust this and see if I can get this to a point where you can see that come right out I think I'm in the almost. And you can see that that travel, and this is kind of hard at an awkward angle like that. You can see. We'll go in like this. You can see as I tighten it up that that gap back here is closing in okay and the general rule of thumb is you want to be able to get a piece of paper behind that so I bring it right up as close as I can get it and this is with the with the gun cocked so that I know you know essentially where where I'm looking to go you see that gap's closing in. And that's pretty good right there. In fact, I might even just take a little bit out. And so what I've done is I've taken that trigger, which would normally sit out here, and then you get all of this, this take up when you pull the trigger. And I've taken all of that out by using that uh, pre-travel screw. And I've turned it in and it's adjusted itself off the bar and um, you know if we look back here and what I do is I've, I've got one of these cheap um, these cheap plates and I cut it down because I I don't use these plates I got this from somebody and I'm not going to use it so I use this as a viewing plate and what I'll do is I'll just back here and take this one out and we'll put this one in I'm trying to do this as quick as possible for you guys but we'll put that in so that we can see what we're looking at now what we're looking for is we're looking for the engagement of let's see if I can yeah, this is kind of hard to I'm gonna hold this in my mouth and kind of point to a few things and then take it out and tell you what I'm talking about so this is this is the striker and this is where our sear engagement is and essentially you want that sear engagement at you know no less than three quarter of the cruciform uh, rear of the cruciform engaging on that sear and and actually right now I've got full sear engagement with the with the um, with the pre-travel and the over travel settings that I have and I've taken all of that take up right out and that is, that's the take up. That's it. I mean, it's it's like an an eighth of an inch, maybe.
Okay, and then you can, and there's the reset. Reset. Okay. And so if you're, you know, if you're, if you're going to carry this modified, which, um, you know, I don't have a, a problem carrying this modified, you want to make sure that your trigger safety is still working. And if you look down through here, um, and right now, cocked but if you look down use a flashlight and look down in there you want to make sure that you haven't set the over travel so much that the plunger the safety plunger the striker safety plunger is not being engaged and we can see here by looking at it that it's not engaged it is just touching the edge of it right where I've got it set Okay, so that safety is still engaged. The striker will not fire in that position. And I'll show you as soon as we as soon as we cock it. Now you can see that the the safety plunger is disengaged now. It is pushed up um, by the, the trigger bar. And it's disengaged and it's ready. Um, And as soon as I pull back on the trigger, it pushes it in the rest of the way, disengages it, and allows the striker to come forward and ultimately ignites the primer. So, for again, you know, 60 cents. You can do your own um, your own pre-travel and um, and uh, over travel adjustments, and you know just find yourself a drill bit that's slightly smaller than the threads. Let's see if I can get that in there. You, I've got a drill bit that's slightly smaller than the diameter of the threads. So basically it's the inside diameter of the threads, the minor diameter. And, um, you know, use this. I like to start out with a really little one. And I actually have one made up right here. And this is a teeny tiny one I use for my pilot hole. And you can see it's so small I have to put tape on it to get it to chuck in my drill. So, you know, it was 20 minutes. I meant to make it faster, but, you know, it's all in one take. I wanted to show you guys that you don't have to spend uh, $100 on a trigger. I mean, unless you want, you know, if you want an aluminum trigger. And I, I'm not saying anything bad about an aluminum trigger, but it's good to know that you can modify your guns. You can do these things to them. You can add over-travel um, stops. And, uh, you know, you can add a, a take-up screw here that takes away all of that um, pre-travel. And uh, essentially, you know, you're doing this yourself. It's fun. If you mess up, a factory trigger is like 15 bucks on NDZ. Um, so, I mean, it's not something that it's, it's going to put you out if you, if you mess it up. And... Honestly, if you just take your time and, and just think about it, think it through a little bit, make sure that your angles are right. You know, if, if the pin is going through this hole here, you obviously you don't want the travel screw or the set screw to go into that hole. So, you know, make sure that you're drilling your hole, um, you know, out away from that so that your pin goes in there. It's got, you know, it's got all that factory molding around for the strength and you know go underneath it drill your hole through this way All right and that's it so thanks for watching 20 minutes is up um you know if you like the video subscribe i've got a few more videos coming up we're going to do 
uh, a Mantis X review. I've had the um, Austin at Mantis X has sent me um, one of the Mantis X units as a demo, and I've been uh, you know using that training tool for a little while. We're going to review that soon. I've got uh, well, I've got a big review coming on um, magazine extensions. And um, yeah, you like those, don't you? These are the uh, Liberty Civil Defense um, 50 grain. These guys are like uh, 2,000 feet per second, super lightweight, and uh, they're pretty, pretty good defense round in my opinion. I've seen what they do to pumpkins and uh, watermelon, cinder blocks. And compared to, um, you know, a federal hydroshock or something like that, I gotta say these are these are way better. So, all right, we're well, we're getting into 22 minutes. Again, thanks for watching, uh, and we'll see you guys soon. Thanks.